Hey, what's going on everybody? Mike here, AXC Garage. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna show you our next project car. Now, this car over here is a 2001 Acura GSR. This is a USDM car, but as you can see, it got a JDM front end. It got a pretty interesting story how we got this car, John. Tell, tell us more about it. Well, the car is pretty cool. It actually came from a friend of ours and he uh, bought it from another friend of ours. So. The car has kind of been in the group for a while. Um, it went from Miami to Jacksonville, and now it's back to Fort Lauderdale. Um, it's pretty, pretty much the story behind it is the original owner wanted to, to be as close to a Type R as possible. So he shaved the door moldings, bought a Type R lip kit and the wing, and then ended up doing front end conversion. It has, I believe, I don't know if it's USDM or JDM it's GSR. A, it's a JDM yeah, uh, B18C. It's pretty complete. Everything is all there. AC. Yeah. Power uh, steering. The power steering belt is not on it, but yeah. man, we drove it down from uh, from Jacksonville for, what, about 400 miles, problem yep. free. Yeah, no issues. Um, yeah, man. So, so let's uh, talk a little bit more about the exterior. It is a metal. Uh, JDM front end with HID uh, is welded on it. It's, it's yeah, no, great. It's, it's all done right. It has the um, the Type R headlights with, you can see their Type R because of this little spot here. Some of the other models, this line carries over. There's SIRGs. I believe those have the chrome housing. There are two different Type R headlights. It has the factory HIDs in it as well. Um, it all lines up pretty good. It's a real, you can see it coming through, champ white. JDM Type R front end, hood, fenders, Metal everything. Fender. OEM, it lines up nice. Um, as, like I said, as far as it goes, they shaved the door moldings. You can see some of where they shaved it off because the GSR, the Type R is the only one that doesn't come with it. The other dead giveaway, no Type R's have a sunroof. And um, the other thing I believe it is, is it the hatch is different? Um, the type bars? Well, the hatch has... Well, it's the supposed G to have a third brake light. You can remove that, which is fine. The GSR has a spoiler, which comes with the light here. Yeah. I guess they shaped the hole because the Type R It's either that or it's, it. a, it's a totally... It may be a JDM hatch. Uh, not, that I'm not quite sure. Because it doesn't... It's oh, supposed to be a be third right. brake light on here. But yeah, either you way, right. um, you know, everything's there. It has a Fujitsu um, exhaust on it. You know, it's, it was... Uh, it's real there it, the car was driven a lot um now the car sat for some time and we decided we were going to go ahead and take it and make it into our next project car but this one's going a little bit out of what our i would say our comfort zone is and what we're used to regularly doing with our builds and i think that's really the most interesting thing oh i forgot five load yeah one of the interesting things about this car it does have a lot of you know listen the, the paint shot, that, that, that's a given. Yeah. But it has a lot of potential. You got JDM front end, you got a 32 millimeter uh, five lugs, you got the OEM uh, body kit all around, got a type R sport in the back. Um, you know, we got a lot of plan for this and obviously something that we'll be doing a little different. And a lot of you guys have been saying, hey man, why don't we do a K swap, K swap, K swap. And I think this may be the one. This might be the one. Even and, more uh, so, I think we already sold the engine out of the car. Yeah, so, <laughs> <laughs> so the swap is gone, the B18C is gone, but before we take the motor out, we want to go ahead and do compression test, making sure everything is good. We know it's good because we drove 400 yeah. miles, it was no smoke, it's perfect. But we just want the buyer to have um, good confidence in the motor, that mechanically, it doesn't have low compression, burnt rings, something yeah. wrong with it, even though he does plan to go through the engine and service it all. But we're gonna go ahead and do a compression test on the car. Then we're gonna work on getting rid of everything out of here, because it's going, the whole kit's going, or the whole swap I'm saying, is going to the new owner. And to start the compression test, we'll go ahead to disconnect the computer. What computer do we have here, John? It looks like a chipped P28. The stickers let me know that this thing makes lots of horsepower because we all know stickers add horsepower. And this one has four stickers, so this oh. one's probably making Ooh. a lot of horsepower. So the reason we unplug the computer is we don't want the injectors to fire. We can unclip them, but we're going to leave the engine harness on the computer, so it's just a little bit easier for us to just unplug the ECU. So what we want to do is a dry compression test. That means 
we don't want the fuel injectors firing. That can give you a wrong indication. Um, if you have low compression when you're doing the test, you can add some oil into the cylinder and that's called a wet compression test and that's gonna tell you whether your rings are messed up or not. And if there is significantly low compression, then we can do a leak down test and that'll tell us if the problem is on our valves or on our piston rings. So we don't really anticipate anything being too far out of whack. Usually there's a rule of thumb of 20 to 30 PSI difference between the cylinders. The actual number isn't as important important as the difference between the cylinders. So now that our fuel injectors aren't gonna fire when we crank the motor, we're gonna go ahead and pull off this really high quality spark plug wire cover. This thing is nice, man. I don't know. You think, do we need to unbolt it or do we just pull it off? Let's just pull it off. Oh man, look at that. <laughs> yeah. oh, I like oh, it. Oh man, that, that thing was high quality. Well, that one's gone. So now we're gonna pull our spark plug wires out, our spark plugs. And then we're gonna go ahead and crank the motor with um, the throttle body wide open. And that's gonna give us a reading on our compression tester. We're gonna show you our compression tester and how we're gonna set it up, but let's first pull everything out. How are we looking? I think they're iridiums, NGK iridiums. They don't look too bad, a little wet. We did know the car was running rich, but you know, not bad. Yeah, I see. So, all right, we got the spark plugs out. Now we're gonna set up our compression tester tool and put it in here. Let's see which one of these fits it. Okay, so that's the attachment, and uh, next up is what, John? So now um, someone's gonna go in the car, and they're gonna crank the car over, and I think it's what, like four or five times, something like that, mm -hmm. and um, while leaving, uh, while flooring the car, you just wanna make sure that it's not struggling to suck air into the cylinder. So, and uh, then that'll give us a reading on here. I'm gonna predict around 180. What do you think? 220. Oh, I don't know, we'll see. All right, so John's gonna hold up the gauge over there. I'm gonna go ahead and foot pedal. That's 210, John, 210, 215. All right, so we're gonna do it three times and just do an average of the three. So we got 210. One more time, here we go. Two twenty. Nice. We'll do it one more time. Here we go. Two forty. Two forty. Two forty. All right. So we know we got solid compression there. So we started on cylinder number four, and now we're gonna work our way across the the board here. Cylinder number two. What's that 230, number? 230, 245, 235, 235, yeah. I should say. All right. 245. Send it. All right. Almost 250. Wow, this motor's strong, huh? Yeah, this thing is strong, dude. All right, so this is the last cylinder. Oh, yeah. 250? Oh, uh, zero. <laughs> Sounder number one. Two forty. This motor is going to be healthy, healthy, healthy. One more time. Two forty. I think we're good to go on this. We can call this motor healthy as far as the compression goes. Oh. 245. What do you say, John? Healthy motor or what? I mean, it's healthy. I, I wouldn't even sell it. I can keep it if you want just to hold on to it, you know, because I like Honda motors, especially B-Series. 
Mike's betraying the B-Series right now. K-Swap. K-Swap is next. Okay, so with a compression test out of the way, we're gonna cut straight to the chase. We go ahead and drop this B18C motor out of this car. And guys, to start it off, we're gonna start draining all the fluid under the car here. We're gonna start off with the engine oil, then the transmission, then lastly, engine coolant. So while the engine cone is draining, we're gonna start working on the exhaust, the shift linkage out of the way, along to the wheels and tires, then we'll start working up on the very top.
And we got pretty much everything out of the way. We got the fluid drained. We got the dry shaft, the shift linkage, along with the exhaust. Next up, let's go and bring the car down and we can finish up on the top. And we're going to get started on the very top here. We're going to start off with the strut bar, move on to the cruise control, the power steering. I'm going to go ahead and remove the entire radiator and uh, try to get more space. So when we drop the motor, we're going to have a lot more clearance. And to be quite honest, I probably going to drop the 41 DC header out too. So it's going to make it easier once I get the motor down on the ground. The intake, the fuel system, and then the harness, the motor mount. I think that's pretty much it. Back to work.
So all we have left is just two mounts, a side engine mount and a side transmission mount. Let's go ahead and get a motor out. All right guys, so both the mounts are out. We went ahead to move the motor forward just a little bit, making sure everything is clear. We got the motor and the transmission on the dolly, nice and tight. All we have to do now, go ahead and lift the car up. Uh, let's take a look here. Okay, let's take a look, making sure everything is clear. Looking nice, making sure the cross members are good there. It's a little tight on the old tanner, so we're gonna move forward just a little bit right there. Go ahead and move up just a little bit more. Double check. Oh yeah, we are good. We are looking good, real good. Okay, all right, let's go. Let's go. Okay, double check, double check. We should be good to go. Intake manifold might be hitting the harness in the back a little bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and move this forward. Yeah, right there. We should be good there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looking nice. Okay, check one more time, making sure we are good. We don't have any more damage. Not that we have any. Okay, I think we are good, guys. Look, man, everything's all clear. All right, here we go. Let's take a uh, view from the bottom. And guys, just like that, we are good to go. Look at that. Car's up in the air. We got the motor and the transmission on the ground. And that's just a regular dolly that you can pick up in your local Lowe's or Home Depot, or you can build your own, just four wheels, a couple of two by four, you can build yourself a dolly. We bought this one from Home Depot. And guys, with the motor and transmission out of the way, we are all done with today's video. Like John mentioned before, this motor and transmission have already been sold. The good thing about that, we'll be doing a complete refresh on both these units and we're dropping in one of the cars that been featured on our channel before. So you guys don't want to miss, make sure you guys subscribing to our channel. You guys like what you see, give us a thumbs up and drop a comment below and let us know how we are doing. And we're going to wrap this video up guys. My name is Mike, behalf of AX Garage. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next week.